All right, the holiday season's here, and we have the perfect stocking stuffer for all of you. It is the awesome-sounding and indestructible Monster Superstar Bluetooth speaker. If you go to monsterproducts.com slash TYT, you're going to get it for $40 off if you buy it before the new year. I don't know why you're still watching this now. Go there and get it. MIA's new music video, Borders, spotlights the refugee crisis. Take a look. Wow, politicizing pop music. That's five words or less. Bad girl does it well. Yeah. Music in activism. Digging it. That's her letter. That's the uh, MIA. Uh, you see what I did there? You see what I did? I was smelling. Yeah. This is MIA okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with Brett. Um, this is MIA plus. Nice. <laughs> okay. So cool. what do you guys think about this? This is a good looking video. Yeah. It's like a yeah. very well shot. She directed she, it herself. Yeah. Yes. And it came out really well. Mm -hmm. I thought the the song is one of those things where, like, the first time you listen to it, you're like, I thought it was that like, this was is so stupid. That was my only criticism because it's if I hadn't been reading an article about it and getting to look at the lyrics, yeah, that I would have probably overlooked the song. Right, because right. the lyrics are things like uh, politics. What up with that? What are some other things she says? And the way she, she does, says it is yeah. kind of you yeah. know what I would like, so it kind of rolls together. So you're not really getting a clear idea of what the point is. The brilliant part is when so, she says, like, yeah. killing it, what's up with that? And, like, slaying, yeah. slaying, slaying it. it. And then you realize the dual meaning of things, like when we say we're doing it well and we're killing it, and when we're doing it well and we're slaying it. Like, that's yeah. murder imagery. Why is that how it is? And then she just leaves it and moves on. She like, put you know? a lot of thought as yeah. a director. When If you notice when the, the refugees were on the fence, okay. it spelled out life. Yeah. they were Their bodies were positioned as life. And that's what people forget. People... Some people, they'll make the, the grave mistake of generalizing these refugees as just, you know, they don't, they don't identify them as human beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or as children. 50% of, of refugees are children. Mm -hmm. And it's really sad. And uh. also 70% of refugees are men because yeah. there was some criticism that they were male. That are, yeah. are male, yeah. yeah. So um, there was criticism that... Uh, there weren't any women in the video. And there has been some criticism that maybe she's glorifying or glamorizing um, refugees. But I, if you know her story, that she... Is a refugee yeah, and her family is yeah, a refugee. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Then, then I feel like you have to throw that out immediately. She's telling... It's an autobiographical story. Those are just a couple of the criticisms that I was hearing that I think we should be aware of where she's coming from before we jump on board and be like, yeah, like, I'm glad you brought you that up, though, that? because I have a tweet here, and there's a number of them that I saw. One coming from a Charlotte Chatfield. I'm a fan of MIA. Not sure how I feel about this. I really hope this is highlighting, not glamorizing, exploiting. There's mm -hmm. a number of uh, mentions in response to that saying that they believe that she was exploiting these refugees. Some people saying that, you know, why did you invisibilize women? And then there was a really cool op-ed article where somebody gave their opinion and said, you know what, this is someone that's endured it. Perhaps mm -hmm. she is capitalizing on the fact that, that, that people will look as refugees as perhaps nameless, as faceless, yeah. as men, not as women, not as children, not as people, not as human beings. So let's, let's imagine that she really put a lot of thought into this. That's what I believe. I don't see how you're glamorizing anything. Yeah. Like if you were glamorizing refugees, I don't know, they would have like champagne and like <laughs> wouldn't be the physical embodiment of a ship. Like, and wouldn't all be so sad looking right, and, yeah. and depressed. I think people, the, what I mentioned just in defense of what they were saying, and I agree with you 100%, they were saying because it was so choreographed, they would have rather her follow refugees. But then that's that whole argument. It's like, here's someone who's trying to spotlight. Yes. Not good enough! Social media is a wonderful thing, but sometimes we are so quick to jump on criticism because we now have a place that our voices can be heard. And sometimes it, 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 I imagine that pre the dawn of social media, we'd have had to give some more thought before we could just type a quick and pithy and unnecessary criticism that, that I, don't, I, don't think, I don't see any way in which that could really be construed as glamorization of right. refugees. And also, um, Benedict Cumberbatch has been doing this play. I think it's Hamlet or something like that um, on the West End in London. But at, at, every night after his performance, he's been talking about the refugee situation. And one of the things he said is, you know, people don't put children in boats unless it's safer in the water than it is on land. Being Drowning. Mountain. Yeah. because mm -hmm. Starving. All of that rather than risk staying on the land yeah. that, yeah, that you're legally occupying. Yeah, because the children risk, uh, you know, being malnourished. They risk disease. They risk exploitation. 
information. They risk, they risk abuse. They risk death. And if that is Getting safer... Getting by photojournalists. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely disgusting. And that's what people have to realize. And we're so quick after the Paris terrorist attacks. People are so quick to to scapegoat, right? Yes, of oh, course. it's 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 you know these these terrorists entered you know easily as a, as a refugee. Right. Yeah. Now, when we all know the people to blame are the Belgians. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the Belgians. I was reading a really interesting article about how difficult it is to enter as a refugee because mm -hmm. people think that it's just so simple. Yeah. yeah. That you sign a form like, can I come in? They're yeah. Like, yeah. Sure. All right. Come yeah. In. There right. are so oh. many hoops to jump through. I'm still not even a citizen of this country. Yeah. For refugees, it's an 18 to 24 month screening process. That's here in the United States. Minimum. They have to have retina scans. They have to have their fingerprints lifted. They have to have e extensive background checks here, also through the United Nations. They have to have interviews where they cross-check their stories with other people that are refugees. Again, this is an 18 to 24 month process. So for the people who are so quick to, and this is just me seeing it on, we've all seen it on yes. Facebook, oh God. where they're so quick to say, oh, you know, and there's a number of governors who've jumped on that bandwagon of scapegoating and marginalizing these groups of people who are victims of terrorism too. It's so sad that they're not really educating themselves with the facts. So take a moment, research, look at it, have a heart, open your eyes, open your minds, and you'll see that these are people that are trying to survive. Imagine being in their shoes. Imagine. Okay, so you guys, please keep this conversation going because this is a really good one, and I think MIA did a great job. And we'll see you guys next time on Pop Trigger. Also, make sure that you check us out on Watchable.